Hi guys, welcome back. You'll notice I'm not in my dressing room. I was getting bored of my dressing room. I figured we needed more variety. Variety is a spice of life. I am currently sitting at the very top of the Schubert Theater. And that's a good theme for our episode because I'm going to be showing you the Schubert Theater like you've never seen before, like I've never seen before, just like we've never done this intro in this space before. Stark Sands is gonna take us on an incredible tour and we are going to see, I'm actually not gonna tell you what we're gonna see because I want you to be surprised because I actually have never been on this tour. So I'm gonna see it with fresh eyes just like you. See you at the tour. Broadway.com, I present Stark Sands! We're presently um, on the stairway that leads to the men's ensemble dressing room at the stage right at the Schubert Theater. There's a back door to that dressing room that leads to a section of catwalks and fire escapes that connect four different Broadway theaters. And supposedly, there's a way you can get from one to the other through this private network of catwalks. Let's go check it out. Alrighty. Just some cool guys opening a door. Hey Terry, uh, we're in the men's ensemble dressing room. We're just gonna pop the door open. Just wanted to let you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Wow. Beautiful sunny day. Make sure, don't get locked out. Very important, put the door stopper in place. So, I have to uh, give credit where credit's due. I learned about this from an amazing book called The Untold Stories of Broadway, written by our friend Jennifer Tepper. It's incredible, it's interviews with people from, from decades of working in the business about every single theater on Broadway. And that's how I found out, so thank you, Jen. Here we are, in between our theater, the Schubert, and next door to us, which is the Broadhurst. Anastasia. Anastasia is here. Now, this is the door to our mezzanine level. Up the stairs gets you to the uh, balcony level. So in an emergency, these doors would open and people would be able to get out and, and Is that down what the purpose the of this is? This yes. is an emergency exit. I think that's how it started. But I think there are doors, like the door to our dressing room, that lead to the dressing rooms of these other theaters. These are just two of them. So come down the stairs. There's also a great story when I asked our crew guys about this before I explored it. And they said that their dads, and their dad's dads, because it's a very generational thing, the crew, the, it's, it's like a hand-me-down career. Um, they we, said, have like, we have like fathers and sons on our crew, yeah, for instance. Quite literally. They said that in the old days, before security systems and security cams and, and, and trip, alarm trip sensors, um, they, their dads would take jobs at multiple theaters that had joined like this because everything was written on paper and it wasn't in computers so they could take a job for a show at the Schubert and also get hired for a job next door at the Broadhurst or at the Booth or at the Schoenfeld and they could literally like be pushing something on stage on one show and then on a five minute break run over here and do something else in this show and they would get, get paid, paid for dollars. Very Cynthia Nixon. Yes. I'm oh, sorry. So here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh my Gerard God, Gerard's waiting. coming through. Did you guys ask, how did you make it here? How did we make it here? How we called the number. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from the bungalow upstairs, the men's dressing That's room. how we got here. Oh. And we put a stopper on great. the door. There's more stairs? You want to come with us on this of journey? Course. Come on, it's come on. It's Duran. Duran is in our show. Is on They've the already team. met Duran, okay. star. Sorry, guys. So now we've gone north. And now the theaters we're next to are the Booth Theater Booth and the theater. Schoenfeld. Schoenfeld is where we have Come, come from, from Away. The Booth I love that is where we have Gary, our new neighbors. And just like I said, see, those are the doors that lead to their mezzanine level. Which I think is the only thing they have, right? They so we could go in and we could see Nathan Lane yeah. on stage right. Yeah. Not right now, but, but, but soon. If I, if I had a friend in this theater, like an usher or something, during the show, because I have a huge break in the show, in our show. I could come up here, I could do a special knock like this. It's not really gonna happen, I'm just acting it up. Because he then, doesn't they could, have a friend in there. <laughs> they could pop the door and I could sneak back and I could watch like 15 minutes of Gary for free. 
You're saying you can watch shows for free if you have friends in a show? <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a concept, right? All right, let's keep going. Like, I wonder where that door goes. That looks like that's a dressing room. That's into our theater, right? That's this theater, that's the booth. Oh, that's the booth. Yes. This is now, that's the audience. This is stage right of the booth. And I bet you anything that is leading to a dressing room. We gotta find out who it is. Julie White? Could it be Julie White? It could be Kristen Nielsen. Kristen Nielsen. Oh my god, you guys. It could be Nathan Lane! <laughs> it might be Nathan Lane, you guys. Should we knock? No, we shouldn't. Okay. We don't want to bother a legend in his prime. And we may not go down there, but if you look down here, go get low. That is yet another. A lot of doors that could lead to any of, of a number of places. It's like, it's like an Escher painting. Yeah. Anastasia. And I don't know what's going in there, but on some, someday it'll be John, do show. you know? I have no idea. They're, they're closing soon. But it, and it, over it, here, again, this has come from away. We have so we have, time, we have time to make more friends. We can make some friends. And see Hopefully, more shows. If our show runs and runs, which we are hoping that it will, um, let's make some friends and make a pledge to uh, return to this on the vlog, perhaps, and uh, find out where these doors lead, okay? Thank you, Stark. Thank you, Duran. Hi. Hi and bye. Hi, guys. I have Babe Buzan here. I'll be Merrily's. <laughs> here we are doing a What's the Deal segment on the Schubert Theater. This is actually our backdrop. And the segment is What's the Deal with Being an Understudy? Baze, can you tell Broadway.com all the roles that you play? Yes. Um, Scout, Mayela, Miss Stephanie, the town gossip, and <laughs> Dills, Gideon's Mama. Four. Uh, that's really funny that you're my mom because <laughs> we are the same age. Yeah. Um, Avi, can you tell Bobby.com all your roles? I understudy you, Gideon, Dill, Jem, uh, the bailiff, Boo Radley, and Mr. Roscoe. Who? Wow. Okay. So how do you, you guys? Count Gideon and Dill. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like, really? That's like six, six. a lot. <laughs> I need a full understudy just for my life. Um, <laughs> right. So, okay, how, how do you keep track of all of these parts? I, I have, I mean, I have these notebooks. Oh, <laughs> um, okay. No, uh, I have a notebook for yes. uh, Dill, and a yes. notebook for Jem, and a notebook for everybody else. Um, and... I don't know. You run lines when you can. I sometimes run lines with my dad over the phone. <laughs> so cute. Very cute. <laughs> what about you, Beige? Um, you just kind of take it one one gal at a time. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually my motto oh, yeah. in life. <laughs> um, you love women, right? <laughs> I do. Love women. Okay. Um, one one part at a time. And we also, Bobby and I, and the rest of the understudy company, we are also part of the ensemble of the show. So we perform nightly with everybody. And we are on stage for a lot of the, for all of the court scenes, and, we were, and for some of the other action. And we were very lucky to be in uh, the rehearsal process too. So we got to watch rehearsals, uh, and and you watch when I when you watch these guys like do a scene over and over and over again and try all these different things and then talk about it. Uh, you feel like if you're actually watching, you feel like you're trying these things as well. You're learning about the scene, you're learning about how the play works, and so that helps too. So riddle me this, so if you're on stage during the testimony, mm -hmm. the, the entire, uh, the entire sh uh, cast is on stage during every testimony, we watch the whole thing. Do you run the part in your head, uh, let's say Nayla for instance, are you running her lines in your head um, while it's happening? I, I'll give that a hard sometimes. A hard sometimes. Because... <laughs> That's also one of my moments. <laughs> <laughs> Great, we so much Hard sometimes. Um, I, I think that while a great tool yes. and very practical, it is not really the responsible actor thing to do because, you know, you're not present. Right. You're thinking about your lines. You're right. not actually listening, You're not being responding a spectator. to what's going yeah. on. So, um, maybe sometimes, sometimes. Noted, noted. Yeah. Well, let's talk about rehearsal now. Um, Avi, because you understudy Jem and Dill, are you, how, how does that work? Because you're the only one that understudies Jem and Dill. So, do you act with yourself? 
I often act with myself. We uh, we rehearse also one of my models. generally <laughs> once a week, and uh, and yeah, I usually do both. Um, sometimes I want to have the experience of just going through the show as one person, and then I'll ask our stage manager Jason, uh, and he will be the of uh, the person I'm not, and he'll sometimes like walk as Dill when I'm jamming, uh -huh. um, and sometimes he'll just say the lines. But, um, but often I am talking to myself. Right. And do you, like, physicalize that? Do you... Because like, oh. you did Hand to God, so... Like... <laughs> sometimes I'll be like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'll be like, if I'm Dill, I bet I'll like, be moving my hand, like, sort of to remind myself. I don't even know why I'm doing it. Moving my hand to, like, indicate that Jam would be crossing at that moment. It's just... I. I, I observe Abby do this at every understudy rehearsal, and I have to say there are two really, really special moments. Please tell us. One is uh, a moment in which Dill and Jem hug one another, and Abby, like, it's not even like a kind of, he goes, <laughs> like, the emotion of, like, grabbing someone. And then the other moment is when Dill and Jem kind of have this little, like, we'll call it a heated moment, and Jem's kind of saying, like, saying something. I cut kind of myself pro provocative off. To, to Dill, and Dill kind of turns around and says something Wait, back to him. Wait, it took me so long to figure out what scene <laughs> was going. I was like, Wait, I'm really we really sticking a lot for you because you got to come see the show. But um, <laughs> Abby does a really oh, mic check. They're testing. Abby does this really great thing where he's like, he's Jem, and then he turns around and he's Dill, and he has tears in his eyes. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. How do we do it? I don't know. <laughs> Talent. Talent. Um, okay. All right. Cut to, it is the morning. It is 11 in the morning. You get a call from Jason, our stage manager, and you have to go on at one or two o'clock as Jem, Dill, or Scout. What are you feeling? <sighs> Don't know, because it hasn't happened yet. But it will. It's probably a mix of like excitement and like obviously deep nerves. Yes. Adrenaline. I'm very grateful for the subway ride. Yeah. Like, I get a lot of work done on the subway. Like yes. You live in Brooklyn. It's great. Yeah. It's great. I honestly think I would probably just get myself to the theater as quickly as possible. I think right. that's what would happen, is I would get myself here, and then I'd, like, do what I need to do here, do my yoga, do my warm-up. Sit on the toilet. <laughs> just really do some sure. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah and important. then probably, like, check in with you, check in with Will, um, look at my script. Got it. Yeah. And, um, you know, just be like... Bobby and I went to grad school together, actually, and we had a teacher who said the, the gift of understudying is that there's no time for fear. Mm. You just gotta. I love that. Nice. Yeah, and we're well prepared. Like we we get to rehearse all the time, uh, and we were and like I said, being in rehearsal, it's been a long run. And, yeah, you know, we've had a lot of time to sort of dream about it. And yeah, think about it. I don't mean dream about it like I'm dreaming of this, but like just like <laughs> like. Let your mind, like... There's nothing wrong with dreaming of it. Yeah. Ruminating. It's dreamy. What I'll say also is that the whole cast, uh, we are, it, it's a very large cast, it's a very large ensemble cast, and I feel like we're all, we, we all do this show together every day, so it doesn't feel like if we took one out and put another in, that it is, uh, it, it's all the same woven fabric, the same kind of thread. It's not like you're getting it from a different store, mm -hmm. and it doesn't fit. Yes. Everything already fits. Yeah. And I can't... Wait. I think I it'll be, be very guys. exciting. It will be exciting. It's going to be great. All right. Bye, guys. That was it. That was our show. I hope you learned a lot this week, because I learned a lot. I learned about the Schubert, like I've never seen before, with our lovely Stark Sands. I learned about being an understudy more. I hope you loved Stark. I hope you loved Baze. I hope you love Obby, because I love them. But not as much as I love women. Till next week.